Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Rule the Waves as Italy, episode number 35. Number 35! I've gone pretty far in this series. Uh, January 20, 1927? Oh, I um, accidentally hit the end turn button, but we haven't missed anything. It's just, it's just... This is exactly where we left off for the most part, except for I do need to show one other thing. Advanced Director. Gah. I have begun construction of the Duca de Osta. Now, I don't know actually if... This should be with an O or not. Unfortunately, another thing that has been pointed out in the comments, by the way, I haven't seen the comments for the previous video, episode number 34, which was a pretty long rambly one. I can do nothing but apologize because it's out of my hands at this point. It's been recorded, it's committed, and I, I just kind of asked for a little leeway on those videos where I, uh, yeah, I mean, basically 35 episodes into the series, we just, through random generation, if we just RNG'd these uh, commentaries, we'd have a few outliers that, you know, just don't belong in the series in general. But I, I don't know why. I'm just, I feel a little harsh about my last comment, the commentary in my last video. Nonetheless, moving on. It's really minor, just personal thing, basically. Um, we have all our ships retrofitted. We're ready to go. We are building a third dreadnought, and we still have a slight amount of money left so that we could, if we dare, perhaps, somehow, maybe, build a Battlecruiser class. And we are still missing um, the Nike and the Tiber. So we do want to get those out. By the way, I want to uh, say that for the Ruler Rays responses, Aussie Militant, the Guglielmo Braccio de Ferro, the name was a bit long. I have to say it was just a little bit longer. And I know you asked for an Armored Cruiser and didn't get it. I might have to say that the name was a... Did I... Maybe I did give that. No, we only lost this play. Now, we only built two armored cruisers. That's right, because our budget was in such sad, sad shape. So anyway, um, just the name was a bit too long, but I wanted to say that I would love to have given you a name, and that maybe I'll even try to give the Braccio de Ferro to a light cruiser or something, because uh, yeah, I, I really liked otherwise the... Uh, I mean, I've read a lot of your comments, and you're definitely a, a strong participant for my series. So thank you for the name submission, and I basically I'm just apologizing for not putting your name in. Okay, so moving on. Moving on, moving on. Germany. Go for the win. AP penetration, which is actually something we could focus our research on. Hmm. How many submarines do we have? I think we had, like... 64? 73. Okay. So maybe we don't need any more than that. Yeah, let's let's just go for the battle cruiser next. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm gonna choose this one. Because it doesn't look like... I imagine the budget should go up higher for this one. I mean, we're kind of in position to go to war. So, let's do it. Damn it, with the wrong people, though. I mean, it's good for our budget. Okay, now, now's the time. Now's the time. We're going to get into war, and then we're going to... Gosh, what I mean, what are we using for this? We're I guess we're going to use a 14-inch guns. Yeah, tensions are too high. Really, USA only has quality zero 14-inch guns, but they have quality one 15-inch guns. Holy cow! It's moments like that when you realize how pathetic the Italian naval research has been. We have two, I, I guess you could say three relevant quality one guns. The 12s, the 6s, and the 4s. Wow. At 1927. I mean, this, ah, wow. I don't think I remember being this far behind, even as Russia, when I played them. Um, that is really far behind. Okay. 
Okay. Great. By the way, I should have been using Reserve Fleet more more um, actively. Okay, finally triple torpedo mounts. I know I talked about strategic destroyers last time. That would be our means of getting it now. I still, I just don't really like it. It's quite an expensive to ship. <laughs> like. Just needs to be fast enough to run away. Wow. How did that, that? I mean, somehow that worked out perfect. And, yep, it's still a really expensive ship. That's because it's oil. Go to coal. Go to short. Go to speed. Does this make a difference? Speed normal. We're at 1856 for the cost. 1858. So yeah, it actually does. It, it does make a difference. And that would take it away, but... Huh. It's weird, and you, you, you're you thinking, I'm sure, like, oh, don't do this, this is, uh, this is terrible. I probably won't. Okay, so this is one point, exactly 1.9. What is even the build cost? I can't remember of our... Lebechias, which, we, do we need? I think we need to refit them anyway. 1914, my god. Yeah, but not many of them survived from the 1914 original date. <laughs> As you can see, the... Yeah, I know that we lost a lot of the early ones, so they may not need to refit just by merit of the fact that they're all new since I lost all the older ones. Anyway, this is, um, woo, this is 3 million, so that is a pretty penny. Let's also refit these, honestly, I think, I don't know, like, what we can even do, but just so they don't become obsolete. And it, I have to say, it's still, like, it is a great ship. Sure, it doesn't have very good fire control, but I still think it's a great ship. And let's rebuild all of these. Let's see, 2.5, 2.4. So it just barely costs anything. Those will all be ready for war. Yeah, every ship, even the Edna was 1923. These are 1923. These are all 1925. We have one more, 1925 coming in. Okay, yeah, so it doesn't, we're not going to do any of the destroyers. We're not going to do any more light cruisers. We're just going to get perfect timing because we're going to build a battle cruiser. So um, we're going to get a battle cruiser. And there's the submarines. Okay, perfect. So this is the time, I believe. Let's get 10 more. That sounds crazy just at the same time I'm about to build my battle cruiser. But I think it'll be okay because we have uh, a few ships in. Well, I don't know. I'm pretending it'll be okay. Oh, that's right. We don't have a backbone on which to build our battle cruiser. Uh, prestige and tension. Budget and prestige. That's what I want. That's what I want. We'll take the prestige hits all day. This could be a lot of clicks. It is a lot of clicks. Every one of those uh, weight savings is helping our battle cruiser. Yes. Ladder shooting, very effective. Definitely want it. Okay. The gods have graced me with quality one ten inch guns. Our Etna can be refit. <laughs> yes, indeed. Etna, it's time for you to. We're not really. You have better guns. How much would this cost? Thousand by itself. Wow. Not that expensive. Not too bad. Not too bad. I have to say, what changed, by the way, that our monthly balance went up so high? Oh, was our monthly balance... What? I don't understand. What? Do we have a fluctuation in budget? I thought our budget was supposed to go up from that pop-up, but... Unrest is getting up there, too, because we're spending too much. So, it's funny that the Italian... Even when we squeeze the budget for everything we can get, the people are so unhappy that we're doing that. And maybe there's some corruption stuff going on here, too. Our nation does have corruption stuff. So, we're back down to five, that's good. 
but we're losing money and it's really hard to build a negative five million per month battle cruiser when you're already losing money. I do have to say. 23 months left on this one. If it's the only ship, is it okay to accelerate? Well, let's do normal because I remember 18 is the break point, I think. Oh, the submarines. That's right. Ah, advanced director. Okay, perfect. So this Praetorian is actually going to get the advanced director. And when that model comes out, which will be the 1927 or 28, I guess, probably, we'll actually upgrade the other two Praetorians to that um, style as well. I don't know if that's even possible, but I think it is. It can, I, uh, doing refits on ships when the class already exists, by the way, can have negative effects, I think, on, um, on the class, if like, if there's trials or, or speeds, I don't know. Um, we'll see though, we'll see what happens. Uh, maybe it's okay. Maybe I'm just not remembering correctly. By the way, did our Fortuna in the end get quality one? She did. Okay, so all of our Praetorians are in great shape. We're ready. We're ready for war because even though we only have two good ships, three, I guess, if you count the Fortuna, she's borderline. She's just aging. You know, she's 10 years older than the Praetorians. Um, yeah, we just... I need that quality one. Give me the quality one, 14-inch guns. If we wait, we'll never get it though, right? Okay, fine. So the U.S., please don't go to war with us. We we just... We, uh, let me also just take a moment to see what is the difference between getting it built here or there. 156, but if I do it there, 152. Hmm. Battle cruisers will be able to fight at range, so we will do that. We'll take the higher deck though. Yeah, I'll probably do 10.5. I'm just feeling like 10.5 for some reason. Turrets this, turret top. Well, 4.5 is fine. Secondary's down to two. We're doing it. Uh, maybe that was the reason, I don't know. Oh, this will be the Nike class. Okay. Still partial to um, whole sets of guns, <laughs> not two and a half or three and a half turrets. Just doesn't make sense to me. <clears throat> We're gonna clear the mounts. It's not gonna have any torpedoes because it'll be going too fast to need them. I'm gonna slow this down to 28 as well, and you might think they're, you're crazy, but we need that weight to be used for armor and stuff like that instead. Let's go up to 110 for rounds. That's actually fine by me though. And you know what? Shoot, we do have quite a weight. Look at that. It's like 1,726. It's almost 1,000. It's 900 tons we saved by just doing torpedo defense too. Let's do it. I'm hoping it's enough. And I, what I'm hoping actually is that this somewhat cheap ship, I mean, surprisingly to me, I don't understand why this ship cheap the ship is so cheap. Surely I've neglected something. Okay, what if we do 11? Yeah, it's just, just does not care. How much does this cost? Nine, okay, that's a lot. That's probably where all the weight was going. What about 13.5? We should get 13, we should even get 14, you know? We'll go up by another, whatever it takes, basically. <clears throat> we'll go up to 13 on the conning tower. Well, that, that seems perfect. Okay, let's stop and take a look at probably what's going to be the final design. Now, uh, I want to talk about a few things because I'm doing this. I have some uh, some method to my madness here. I'm not putting torpedo tubes and I'm keeping my tor torpedo defense low because this is not... Ma oh my gosh! I'm sure you guys were all screaming at me, but I found it. I saw it. And that gives us very little savings, but enough to maybe take this down. Okay, that's nice. And that is a very, look at 135 million. Now our Praetorian, which is technically almost as good, 
is at 120 or actually 114 because of whatever bug that made the 1925 refit lower. And and I'm not I'm saying it's a bug. There might be a legitimate reason. Just let me know if you know in the comments. Um, again, uh, one thing I'd like to stress. Okay, not by spending too much time on my soapbox this time, but just it's always nice if you mention whether you know for sure or. Uh, if you don't say that, I'm just going to assume you don't know for sure, basically, because uh, so many people talk about things um, in this, basically by speculating. But hard facts are very nice to know. Anybody can speculate on the game. I played this. I mean, I put a lot of hours into this game. I, I can definitely speculate on things, <laughs> but I'd rather just know the real facts because that's the only way I am going to improve as a player is by knowing exactly. Uh, I mean, basically, if you have an opinion, I also have an opinion, and who's right? But if you're con if you're saying the game mechanics say this, I can't argue with that. Great ship, though. 28 knots is going to be fine. It's not going to allow us to catch some of the battle cruisers, but I'm I'm okay with that because it's enough to keep up or more or less with a lot of them. And although we won't be able to completely run away, they will face our five gun rear barrage. I'm almost considering, in fact, making this a 3-2-3-3 three, 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 because we won't pay as much of a penalty for the aft centerline superimposed. This will make it a ship which can run away and um, fire the majority of its guns still. So it, we can kind of use this in, in uh, weird strategic ways. If we were to do a front gun one, we could chase ships, but I have to be honest, being so outnumbered, we're probably not going to be in a position to chase ships as often as we will be running away. And it just sounds like terrible, but we I feel like we are going to have to kind of design our ship uh, around um, the circumstances of our fleet, which is just we don't have any battle cruisers. Now, I'm, I'm really happy with this. This is going to like have great penetration, 6 inches at 25,000. Max range of 31,000, we don't know the penetration, but it'll penetrate any deck basically at that point. It's quite good. Having four inches of deck is gonna stop anything but 15 or higher inch guns penetrating it as well, which is nice. 14 inch guns might penetrate, but I'm guessing that with the angle, they won't get the perfect penetration profile. Like these are, I think, the ideal. And if your shell comes in at an angle, should reduce the, uh, Penetration because you effectively are needing to go through more armor. It's uh, the same idea with the right triangle. The hypotenuse is longer distance than a vertical line through the armor. So you're actually traveling through more armor if you're at an angle. Um, besides the fact that they obviously can just deflect at that point too. Okay. So I keep looking at everything. I always get so nervous. I usually miss something, but this point aha we're gonna have to give her five inch guns too which hey i'll save a little bit more that's fine with me because they don't have quality one six inch guns i'm glad i noticed that and honestly i've all i usually give my battle cruisers five inch guns especially this late in the game um we can go all the way down to five inches and see that these actually still have pretty good penetration profiles so even at twelve they they're going to be penetrating uh two inches of of uh, two inches of armor. So they'll be effective against light cruisers, um, especially at any range where our main guns need to prioritize something else and those light cruisers are coming in. So, so I think this is okay. Let's put this back to 15 though, obviously. Just out of curiosity, they do have 17 and they have 18. And I think that 15, actually, from the perspective of raw stats, are not as good. But the fact that these are quality one means that they are the best choice for us. That's what I'm going to say. And, wow. 32. One thirty one, basically 132 flat. Could we just go up a little bit to 115? I think that that's an acceptable decision as well. More guns, battle cruisers can fight at a distance for longer, in which case we might need more shells. Okay, 
Well, that's it. This is the Nike. She is going to be, despite her very low tonnage, I mean, she's just a smidge um, heavier than the Praetorian. But she's going to fight outside of her weight class, I would say. She's very well designed. I'm not just tooting my own horn. I'm partially doing that. I think that it is a really well designed ship, but also because all the weight savings that once she's commissioned, she should be fighting above her weight class. Yeah, especially for any ships that have already been, well, I mean, at the same time, I, I maybe, I might have to take that back just because uh, we're so far behind in technology that maybe a lot of the places have already, I don't know. Anyway, let's save it. I know, I know, I know to both of those things, but we're just going to build it. I'm just going to do it. And the very next turn, we'll probably see that something happens with uh, our guns. Okay, it didn't happen. But anyways, I was, I was considering, you know, I was, I wouldn't have been surprised if something technology had been researched. That's usually how it goes. Okay. Oh, Austria Hungary. I knew that that wouldn't take us all the way to war, but I'm really happy we're getting the ASW. I want to go to war with France. I just hands down want to go to war with France. I'm going to reduce all possibility of trying to raise tensions with the British. We won't do anything to raise tensions across the board. We cannot go to war with the British. And the, the Nike wants her sister ship, the Tiber, as soon as we can. Yeah, I think we would easily defeat this thing. This thing, which is a dreadnought, technically. Weird speeds. A lot of... Okay, yeah, so that, I mean... I don't even know if those help us, because the United States is where we built it, but... Um, yeah, I guess we'll take it. Double gun mounts on DDs. We declined that technology a long time ago. Not that we need it, and I still think we don't. Um, yes. We don't care about Russia. Better stuff. There's the 14-inch guns, quality one. Okay, that's good. Now we don't have to worry about building them. When we rebuild stuff, we can rebuild it, the Praetorian, in our um, in our home waters. I guess that we already did that, though, because the weird cheat. That's right, I discovered the weird bug where you can choose the better quality guns, choose your own uh, from a different dock, and then choose your own dock to actually complete it. An alliance with Russia, how bizarre... Let's do it. They're going to help in Europe. They're going to help. We have to do this. I, I kind of want the disarmament treaty because that would... I think that would... I mean, how many months do we have left? Does it show? Expected... 1929. So it's... Well, we're not sure exactly. Anyway, I mean, I just made the Nike would be scrapped, but the Nike would be scrapped after very little construction. Let's see, how many things are being built across the board? One for us, five, one, three, four, eight. Oh my God. One, one, two, one. Not much going on here. So the US would suffer a lot, but France and Austria, who are our main rivals, would not suffer much. Okay, so let's go for it. Alliance, not... Um, what a, what was it I was saying? Not the disarmament treaty. Oh man, how long have we been going in this? Uh, a little bit more than 24 minutes, almost 25. Okay. That's good. Gradual AP penetration, that's good. Okay, just fixing the monitor for a second. Yes, 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 absolutely. And the better submarines, we can take a look at those too. Huh, Germany. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. Germany. 
Germany. One of our important dignitaries has been assassinated by a group of anarchists. Anarchists. Apparently supported by Germany. What action would you recommend to the government? Holy cow, man. Let's compare Germany and Russia. Yeah, Germany... Uh, we have an alliance with Russia, so they will prevent Germany from just completely leaving. We do have submarines. We have a lot of submarines. Germany has a lot of minesweepers. Okay, they went heavy on the minesweepers and heavy on the destroyers, honestly. Very light on the submarines, though. Okay, I think we do this, which my hope is this causes war with France, not Germany. Whew. Okay, well, we squeaked away from that one. I, we need it. I'm sorry, but we need it. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> Holy good moly. But we have Albania. Historically accurate too, right? Maybe not this early. What time is it? Yeah, maybe 10 years early or so, but that's fine. It's just fine. Um, fantastic. We've expanded the Italian territory. Yay, applause. At what cost? Well, <laughs> let's not consider that question just yet. Um, I have a feeling we're about to go to war, so uh, let's not build the other Nike yet. Let's just get the one Nike and get the Tiber as soon as she's produced. How are we doing on these, by the way? Nine months. So the Duca de Asta will be relevant in the next war, which is pretty cool. And now these designs, knowing these designs is very relevant. 26 knot dreadnoughts. So they are just going to run circles around my dreadnoughts, but it's good to know a lot of their tonnage is tied up in speed. Okay, there it is. There it is. So how do we want to do this? low on the Americans. We really don't want them to impound our ship. We have 18 months left on that. Um, Germany has not much here. We actually could move down and try to take the Eastern European holdings. It's not so much, there's not so much time left in the game, so I wouldn't mind putting the Etna there, for example, if I needed foreign stations after because we're in this really lucky state where, for some reason, Ethiopia by itself doesn't require any foreign tonnage. But I'm pretty sure if we take uh, Tanganyika, that we will actually need some kind of foreign stations there. But I think, well, this is kind of what our strategic battleships, um, strategic dreadnoughts are for. Frankly, I'm just going to move down a lot of my non-combat ships. We probably can't support that much but let's go ahead and move down this and then let's give them well a few destroyers as well I'm pretty sure we cannot support this many down there um, might be time oh my gosh base capacity now we definitely need more base capacity there we're at negative. Okay, well that's not that's not bad. That's not bad. Okay, next. Good point. We have not put all of our massive number of minesweepers to ASW, and the good news is our ASW should be on point. Okay, very good. Prize rules. What? Yikes. Okay. Okay, that was that was very quick. There's the neutral outrage. It didn't cause war. I mean we don't want to go to war with France now. <laughs> Let's just uh back off on the on the all those fronts. Um Prize rules is not supposed to give us that kind of stuff. 
I'll have you know. We have to go through West Africa? Oh my goodness. Okay, well then in that case, let's pull back. We kind of have everything we need. Okay, we kind of have everything we need. I, I think we're going to be okay leaving everybody there. We, I think we're going to... Oh, my God. Eight submarines sunk. What the... Okay, let's move in our raiders, though. And by raiders, I mean the Fortuna. Do I really want to do that? Sure. Well, she's slow. What do we face from the Germans? Wow, they have a lot. Ah, man. Okay. 28. That's doable. And they only have 8 14 inch guns. I mean, we don't have any bases in uh, Northern Europe, so it's not wise for us to fight. But the Lutzau is not. It's not all that. And I really feel like we could fight the Mackinson. We just keep it at range, 27 knots. Yeah, geez, wow, that's a really ugly. The Hindenburg class is terrible, I would say. <laughs> Hessen, even worse. Okay, good. So there's a lot of battle cruisers we can actually fight. And I believe we can run away from the Lutzau. 28 knots, and I mean, worst case scenario, they have a 2 2 front configuration. I think they actually are using the rear, the aft centerline superimposed, which is like smart. But if I'm not mistaken, yeah, we can flee and we'll be launching uh, five 14 inch shells at them. They'll be launching four 14 inch shells at us. And our, our um, Fortuna is a battle veteran, so we're gonna we're gonna risk it. Let's go raid in Northern Europe. Now on top of that, we have a few of these light cruisers, which they aren't doing much good here just sitting around. So we'll just see if we can catch any of the chips in the Mediterranean. Maybe I'll bring the Etna back. Hmm. Okay, let's let's just leave it there. Yes, by all means. Okay, good. Sank five submarines, we sank two. Okay, cruiser action. Hmm, weird, I do have a cruiser there. Battle cruiser, but still. And now um, we do have a fleet, uh, sorry, we do have a, what's it called, a um, base here, so we won't necessarily scrap or scuttle. We can always just be interned in a neutral port or make it back to Eritrea, probably new, interned in a neutral port. <sighs> that was a very nice turn where we got US, the U.S. and the Great Britain to drop down a bit. Yes, good job. Wow, it's actually a really close war in terms of victory points because there's been no fights. Oh, this is interesting. Coastal raid. Well, based on this, I will accept. And there we go. Our first action is with the Etna. Who would have guessed the Etna of all things? Still relevant. And the Vascato is a great light cruiser. So you know what? This is, uh, is going to be a good one. I think though, just in case, I'm uh, as in I'm not sure. Okay, maybe we can just do this one on camera before we go. One little teaser before the real war begins. And you know what? I forgot that. Uh, please say that. By the way, that this is captain's mode. Good. Yeah, this is um. Bombardment target. Where is the bombardment target? Oh my gosh. How much time do we have left in the day? Good. We At least we have enough time in the day to get there. 
So I'll just screws at 18. Okay. Just go on max. Let's get the Viscato to. Yeah. To run basically towards this ship. It's. Minesweeper, okay, well. Basically, don't waste your guns on it, Etna. We need your guns for the shore bombardment, which I'm not even sure we can effectively get. What do we have here? Transport. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be in range for this thing, which is hilarious. I've complained, I, I mean, a lot of people have complained about this kind of nonsense where you can't actually hit the, look at, it's at, literally unhittable. We we cannot hit this. We literally cannot hit, not even in with weather conditions or anything, we cannot hit this. So we're going to end up losing the victory points, which, you know, at 260 to 150, we actually need pretty desperately. We're not going to be able to do it, which is really sad. It's a bummer. Come on, come on, come on, come on, just sink it, sink it, sink it. Yes. It's the only way we're going to get victory points is by trying to capture some survivors. It's just stupid. I mean, it shouldn't be that hard to program the, the Barbara Tarvin not to be inside this minefield. You're going to draw the minefield so you know where that object exists, like from a game developer standpoint. Should have been patched out a long time ago if you ask me. Anyway, we're just going to go ahead and cruise on out of here. There's nothing more we can do. We sank two ships. Whatever. Oh, has sighted an enemy aircraft. This is very rare. You do. I think I've only gotten this once before, but... <clears throat> We're just going to sail away. I, I don't know where the mines are. I mean, okay. Hopefully, because we sank two ships, we don't lose. But I think we do because we didn't destroy our target. Whatever. Fine. <clears throat> yeah, and I, I don't want to get too salty about that. I mean, it's something that should be fixed. But, okay. It's just a, a free... It's, a, it's RNG essentially rolling um, like something bad happening at the end of a battle or something the same way. So it still was an Italian minor victory. That's good. That's good to know. How minor? Well, it was good enough that we got double their victory points. So that's good. Let's see. And because of our alliance with the Russians, the um, the German fleet can't move out. In fact, the Russians appear to be blockaded, but I guess that's not abstracted. Hmm. I mean, not just not abstracted. It's not like counted in the game. So that'll be where we call this episode to a close. I will save here and I will see you back for the war with Germany, possibly to be joined by France and maybe even Austria-Hungary, which would really make things interesting. Uh, hopefully not, obviously, but we'll see how it goes in the next one. Until then, thanks for watching and take care.